Let's pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us together for the last chapel of the 2020 to 2023 academic school year. Thank you for allowing us to end this year safely with healthy bodies. During this time, Dr. Lee will be preaching about discernment. Be with him and fill him with your grace and Holy Spirit. Please be with the students as we listen. Open our hearts and fill us with your word. Tomorrow is banquet day and the graduation ceremony. Be with all those who are performing so we don't get nervous or get hurt. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us this past year, and we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today is the last chapel of uh, 2022 and 2023, school year, actually. And as amazingly, uh, this journey goes really fast, and uh, it's been wonderful uh, having you guys here. And uh, thank you so much for uh, teachers' uh, support and cooperation uh, from students. We have seen a lot of great, great uh, fruit and result in this school year. And thank you for um, uh, also your parents' support. This is actually a live streaming right now. So some parents have you know, been uh, joining uh, this, you know, the chapel together. So welcome back uh, to JCS Chapel. Uh, today, uh, my sermon, a little bit at the chapel message and, me, and also tomorrow's speech the graduation ceremony speech. So I will have only 15 minutes uh, speech you know, time tomorrow. So I was thinking, what would be the good way to uh, encourage those who are going to graduate and those going, going to the, you know, do a performance, a lot of things uh, tomorrow as a banquet and a graduate ceremony. So today, I'm going to a little bit share about uh, speech or encouragement, word of encouragement in English, and tomorrow and in Korean, the same uh, context, but a little bit upgrade, updated the version uh, tomorrow I'm going to do with your parents. Today's my topic is this sermon. I will explain what it means later. A lot of people, they're really interested. It is called numbers. I, what I heard from some teachers that um, one of the greats uh, really uh, fascinated or interested or curious about your achievement, the grade, maybe midterm grade, final grade, or maybe a weekly test, weekly chapter test. Somehow, one of you guys kind of exchange your numbers, which is great, with you know, each other. What is your grade? Somehow we teachers never ever encourage you guys to share together, but you guys willingly, maybe voluntarily, uh, share this number uh, with together. But please do not share your numbers great with others. Okay, this is the uh, personal, private records and numbers. But meanwhile, motivate yourself, encourage yourself, challenge yourself to get better and. Your teachers may um, give you more detailed academic advice and spiritual advice too. Numbers, what we have year 2022, 2023, school year, what kind of number we do have? Since 2016, um, our school has been growing in many areas. Especially the uh, student population demographics, it is called. We're trying to create the best atmosphere, education, environment, where all students and teachers being thrived. Also, they learn more about education, experience about Christian cultures and context. Last one is develop global perspectives, which means learning about people, learning about education, learning about the language, the more holistic the views you are going to learn in terms of it is called Juniper Christian School. It is community. So we're trying to focus on this demographics, not too much focus on non-speaking the Korean English groups or too much, too many like you know native speaking the speakers in terms of you know English you know abilities. So more diverse diversity. Uh, language diversity and even cultural diversity. We try to build up this one. So about US citizens, students about 20% among interpopulation. And those who are studying domestic or overseas, uh, you know, more international school background is about 63 you know, percentile. 
and those who came from public school, 공, 공립, 공립학교, about 17 uh, population, we actually have students here. So I'm trying to you know, build a focus on this group uh, as much as we could, um, even the following school year as well. And student and teacher's ratio, which means uh, one teacher, how many students average about six students. Of course, a little bit more than six uh, class size we do have. But I'm trying to uh, build up small class size. And you may not know, we're not going to have high school new students from this fall semester. And also, we are not going to have out students from outside for um, bridge program, which means the winter school and um, you know, summer school from 2024. So we try to focus on current students and then their uh, growth and academic quality and then a relationship between students and teachers. And this is the actually uh, admissions uh, number acceptance rate. Uh, elementary school students, about 50% acceptance rate, which means maybe um, one student apply and two students apply, one student accepted, another student they rejected. And middle school, about 35 percentile, which means about uh, one student got accepted, but three students got rejected. So uh, this is the number we have seen. But once again, this is not the uh, issue for you know, applicants, which means that those who apply to our school. Probably um, you know, mutual, um, let's say, preparation in terms of you know, academic way and then the teachers in a way, the student, the, the current students, so they're you know, also, um, they're, let's say, leadership and also mindset. There are a lot of factors you know, has a result uh, in this uh, result, uh, the numbers we have right now. So I want to encourage you once again. Now, we're not trying to um, have a small community or uh, focus on you only. No, not really. <coughs> trying to fit the, uh, the sheep, what you know, and the God given us as uh, the leaders and the servants. We're trying to you know, support you as much as we could. And meanwhile, build up the ability, capacity, to have more students in the near future. That is the uh, ultimate our goal of admission purpose. And retention rate, retention means what? Those who s stay as long as here. So students, uh, 98 percentile students every single year, I mean school year, uh, the students stay and then continually uh, study here, which is a really great number we have seen. Actually, retention rate is automatically related with, it is called satisfaction. Satisfaction, academic way, spiritual way, friendship, teachers, relationship with friends and teachers, a lot of factors actually affect on, uh, affect on this you know, numbers. And teachers too, uh, those who stay here longer or those who have to leave, maybe a lot of personal reasons. So 90 percentile, uh, we have seen the retention rate among students and re teachers. You may not know, we do have JC Chapel, especially on the YouTube channel. Do you know how many videos we do have? 806 videos since 2020, uh, 2016? 16, yes. So we st start uh, this school, um, when did we start? 2016, am I correct? 2015, I'm sorry. Yeah. 2015 since. We have uh, 806 videos. Can you imagine? Wow, so many videos we do have. A lot of different types of videos. Chapel, even seminar and student life, Greenpeace, a lot of activities, Jirisan, you know, exchange program, a lot of videos. So musical, subscribers, 758 subscribers. You may say not many. In terms of actually school context, we do not promote a lot of you know, interesting you know, the topic, the videos only related with the school, you know, or education, you know, context. So which means uh, very, um, let's say, 
certain demands or certain the people who really interested in the education field, they probably you know, find these resources, which means uh, 758 subscribers in terms of school size, in terms of you know, uh, people need demands, is an amazing number we have, you know, have right now. And uh, this is the college uh, the continents we sent um, the, our alumni, the class, I mean the, the senior students. Like you can see that North America, West Coast, East Coast, Australia, then Hong Kong, and South Korea, and uh, also, you know, Songdo and Japan. You know, these the continents we have sent our students to the higher education, which is college in the group. So this is the now class of 2023, the academic achievement. So look at this one. Their GPA, unweighted, which means without AP courses, advanced placement courses, is about out of 4.0 GPA, their average about 3.5 and to 3.7. 3.5 means ab above B plus the entire classes. Subjects and weighted, which they include the AP courses, is about 3.8 to 4.0 the GPA achievement. And total score six from sixth graders to eighth grader. You guys are going to take this opportunity, and out of 120 scores, their average score is about 90 to 95 total scores, which is great numbers. Um, hope that uh, you know other. The grades, we're going to have a great uh, the achievement as well. And uh, SAT, out of 1,600, average score is about 1,351 average GP, the scores. And English is about, out of 800, 623. And the math, 728 scores. Asian students, very good at the math. So uh, be humble. This number is not that great. It's great, but not excellent. I want to encourage you guys, do your best. The meanwhile, build up English score you know, as well. AP courses, average two to four. Um, of course, those who may have more than you know, this number, but average is two to four average AP courses. Mock standard test, SAT, TOEFL, until they graduate, they finish up, average is 12 to 15 times they finish this one. So this is their achievement, college. Here, look at this one. So liberal arts major, there's a majors they took, they're going to go to college. And business major, communication, international business, and uh, applied mathematics, a STEM major, biology, and computer science, fine arts, and film and media arts, graphic design, interactive design, immersive reality, AR, VR, that's the uh, majors they are going to have. I'd like to, have a, it is called, let's say, complimentary time, which means encouraging and then cheer up, you know, cheering time. So when I call each grade, those who are going to walk tomorrow, the commencement, let's give a big, you know, hands of applause to each grade, okay? Please. Fifth graders, please stand up. All right, good job. Let's give a big hands, all right? All right, good job. Well done, well done. Good job, well done. Okay, please, you may be seated. All right, eighth graders, please stand up. All right, well done. Well done. Okay, well done. Good job, here we go. Okay, please, you may be seated. All right, 12th grader, class of 2023, please stand up. Please stand up. Okay, please stand up. All right, well done. Okay. Jaewon, would you stand up? All right, good job, okay. okay. All right, please, you may be seated. And then everyone's well done, uh, last 19 week. Today, before you finish up this semester and 2022, 2023 school year, this is a message I all the times remind you, encourage you to remember. Even the adults who are going to continually study and uh, with, as a different grade, Paul, Apostle Paul, he had about three times international, global world missions. 
And this is the map, actually, second global, global emissions. So he went to, first place is the Berea. Berea, I'm sorry, Berea, he visited, and he visited Corinth. While staying here, first of all, he approached Jewish community, the temple of, you know, uh, Jewish temple, and talk about Jesus Christ as of the Messiah. But meanwhile, Jewish people, they persecute or criticize, threat Apostle Paul um, with their, like, a lot of plots. So while staying this location, he got a lot of support, financial support, like spiritual support from the church in, it is called Thessalonica. So it is a city that is a harbor, and then 2,000 years ago, it's really prosperity, a lot of population, a lot of incomes, money, a lot of people, they had this city. And the church in the Thessalonica has a lot of support, financial support, they are gonna support actually the uh, Paul and his team members. And he was really appreciated by the church in the uh, Thessalonica, so he decided send the letters, two letters to this church location. And last week, Miss Joyce, she talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 to 18. Hall of Fame chapter, it is called Rejoice, Prayer, and Give Thanks. So this is the uh, chapter, the Bible verse we heard. And then today, chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. Interesting thing is this one. First Thessalonians, entire chapter, entire book talk about Jesus coming back, which is what? He's going to come back soon. We're, time is near. So verse 21 to 22, in this situation, which is a lot of, condemnation, test, persecution, and Jesus coming back soon. And this season, you got to keep in mind a couple of things. One of the things is this one. But examine everything, hold firmly to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil, which means that you need to be careful whenever you make the decision, when you make the choice. Why? Because a lot of temptations, a lot of threatening. The world is not easy. In Korean, what the Bible mentioned, And Paul mentioned discernment, either A or B. Either A or B. So discernment, according to dictionaries, what the, the dictionary said, the ability to judge well. And in Christian context, perception in the absence of a judgment with a view of obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding, which means what? It is hard to make the choice, right choice, make the right decision. And John MacArthur, the well-known pastor in America, what is he defined discernment? What he said in its simplicity definition, discernment is nothing more than the ability to decide between truth and error, right and wrong. This is the point. Discernment is the process of making careful distinction in our thinking about truth. What is the truth? A lot of people mention about the truth. But somehow interpretation, their perception, their judgment is absolutely it is different. In terms of race, their financial status, education level, religious, other perspectives, their decision, their interpretation about discernment, about the truth, it is different. Discernment, somehow interesting, the fascinating phenomenon in the Bible is this one. There are about the word of discernment is 64 instances, which means cases, stories, Bible talk about. 64번의 story가 분별에 대해서 나와. As a noun. The verb discern about 73 
in, instance, which is our cases, Bible talks about. Many, many times, Bible mentioned about this sermon. Now, why? Bible is talking about this one. Why it is important? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it talks about it is called last day, last word. And the Bible mentioned we are now, now what? In the last day right now. Yesterday, according to the media, the news in Seattle, the Korean American community, one lady who got actually uh, you know, pregnant and the baby, they're about to give a baby the, the birth. And then husband is driving the downtown Seattle in America. But one guy bring the shotgun and without any questions, never ever met each other, but just shoot the car and this car. The lady, the mom, she got killed. She got, you know, like got you know, shot on her head. The baby, unfortunately, and the baby also died too. The husband got injured, the only arms. Can you imagine? Just suddenly, the loved wife, and then they expecting the precious child. They got killed and they died without any reasons. And then a few days ago, and then weeks ago, and then in Busan, the one psyche, the psycho, the person, about 19 times went to jail as a young man. And then without any question, in the, uh, the you know, hall area, the woman, the 20s, the age woman, just kicked her head and knocked down and trying to rape. And now in the jail right now. And they're trying to sentence about permanent you know, sentence. But he got about 20 years. But some of this guy, he never ever apologized. And he would bring his own voices. I'm not that wrong. I was upset. Well, why am I the only one who got death or permanent you know, sentence? This is not right. This is not true. He bring his own voice, the woman, what he said, I'm going to chase her where when I exit, I get out of this jail. This is a really ridiculous statement he mentioned, and a lot of people really what? Anger, and then really angry, and then, you know, pro propose a more that or harder sentences to we ask about judge. And another one is a horrible case. A 23 woman trying to find what? The woman or the person she want to kill without any reasons. It tries to what? The surfing the internet and then personal private tutoring, then she found it and meet the personal private tutor. And then as soon she meets, she met the person, she killed the person without any questions, any reasons. What do you think why we have seen this like horrible, brutal, any like instance or you know, death in cases, even drug issue, the child abuse, and a lot of unfair issues, immorality issues, immoral ethical issues. The Bible clearly mentioned about this one. Difficult times will come, which means now we are in this time right now. What the Bible mentioned briefly, this one, guess what? This Bible was written by Paul 2,000 years ago. Let's see that what Paul mentioned about the last day. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, and slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. 한국말로 한번 읽어볼게요. 잘 들어보세요. 너는 이것을 알라? 말세에 마지막 때 고통하는 때가 이르러 사람들이 자기를 사랑하며 
돈을 사랑하며 자랑하며 교만하며 비방하며 부모를 거역하며 감사하지 아니하며 거룩하지 아니하며 무정하며 원통함을 옳지 아니하며 모험하며 절제하지 못하며 사나우며 선한 것을 좋아하지 아니하며 배신하며 조급하며 자반하며 쾌락을 사랑하기 하나님 사랑하는 것보다 더하며 경건의 모양은 있으나 경건의, 경건의 능력은 부인하니 이 같은 자들에게서 내가 돌아서라. Question is this one, guys. What is the difference between Paul's time and now, 2023 years right now? Question is this one. The 마지막으로, let me finish up this one. Then those who are going to graduate, 2000, class of 2023, going to college, welcome. Welcome to the society. Welcome to the world. As or not the child now under 18, now you are now adults. And those who are going to be a middle school and high school students. Then, and then also current students, what are you going to do? How shall we leave? This is the, uh, the command, what we have to remember. All students, all teachers, including myself. Book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Clearly, Moses, she encouraged and gave the message, the leader who are going to take over his leadership and lead about 600,000 people of Israel to what? To the desert and land of Canaan, the promised land, and teach how to live, worship the Lord. This way, what the Bible mentioned, no, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Keep in mind this one. God, Moses, all the time, mentioned about this word. Be strong. Be courageous. 강하고 담대하라. Why? Because you will lead these people to inherit. Inherit means what? It's like prepare and bless the land I swore, swore to their ancestors to give them. Which means what? You are going to be sent by me, God, to the place I prepare. I promise you are going to be there and work with them. And the Bible said, this is the commandment we have to keep in mind. What are you going to do? It's the assignment. Be encouraged. And be courageous and strong. How? Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate in day and night. So, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. That you will be prosperous and successful. Guess what? God promised us, I will be with you. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be prosperous. You're going to be successful. But guess what? One condition you have to remember, you have to follow. That is what? Meditate the Bible. Read the Bible. Keep in mind what God mentioned on every day. It is called the truth. The truth of the Bible will open the door, lead you, guide you, give you a certain direction, make the right decision, make the right discernment in the name of Christ. Then, what the Bible mentioned that, do not be afraid and be discouraged because the Lord, your God, will be always with you wherever you go. Last about 23 years, school ministry, more than 30 years church experience and ministries. What I have seen, a lot of young people, they got lost spiritual direction when they go to college. Sexual temptation and money temptations, and also life kind of possession or ambitions, their personal goals tempt them, and they got lost about following, chasing our Jesus Christ. Why? Wherever we go, we have little faith. Keep in mind this one. What we have to do, this is the part. We need to keep in mind how shall we live to glorify God? 
then to make the discernment, this is the message we have to keep in mind all the times. So I know my sermon is a little bit longer, but those who are going to listen to this sermon as a last chapel, please keep in mind this message. And that God will be with you. God will bless you. And all the time, he's going to be with you with his encouragement and blessing.